Welcome to my new channel. My name is Dr. Jody Greenfield and I'm board certified in internal medicine. I formerly taught medical students as well as internal medicine residents in training. I currently see patients with general medical problems and I also have an interest in patients with chronic and complex medical problems as well as tick-borne diseases. I enjoy explaining complex medical problems in simple terms. I plan to cover many different topics on my channel. If these topics interest you, please click the like button. If you'd like to see more videos like this, click the subscribe button. If you know of other people who would be interested in this material, please share this video with someone else who you feel would be interested. Today, I'm going to be talking about signs and symptoms of chronic Bartonella infection. What is Bartonella? For you microbiologists out there, Bartonella is a small gram-negative intracellular organism. Where does Bartonella come from? Bartonella can be transmitted via ticks, fleas, sand flies, even lice. There are different species of Bartonella, and we don't know if some may cause clinical disease in people, and a test does not exist for all types of Bartonella. Most of us doctors and healthcare professionals are familiar with acute Bartonella infection. This can occur in people with a normal immune system. One can get Bartonella infection from a cat or dog bite. So this is also can be known as cat scratch disease or cat scratch fever. In patients who are immunocompromised, such as AIDS patients, Bartonella can cause other problems. In someone with a recent cat scratch disease, a patient could get swollen lymph nodes. Someone can even potentially get endocarditis from Bartonella infection, that is, an infection of the valves of the heart. These Bartonella infections generally are more well recognized than patients with chronic Bartonella infections. Now, someone can actually have a Bartonella infection, but may not even have symptoms. However, it is becoming more recognized that patients can have a chronic Bartonella infection. I'm going to discuss some of these symptoms today. So if you have many of these, it would be a good idea to bring it to the attention of your treating licensed healthcare professional. If you're a healthcare professional and you see a patient with many of these symptoms, it would be a good idea to include Bartonella on your list of possible causes of your patient's problem. Chronic Bartonella can affect different organ systems, such as the skin, GI tract, cardiac, musculoskeletal system, and the nervous system. In the skin, it has been observed, people with Bartonella can have red lines, which look like stria, which are not caused by weight gain and do not follow the skin folds. Another dermatological symptom is adult acne in a patient who never really had acne before. In some patients, one may notice an increase in blood vessels, such as spider veins. Chronic Bartonella infection can also cause swollen lymph nodes. Some GI symptoms include gastroesophageal reflux, abdominal pain, diarrhea, or constipation. One can even get liver function test abnormalities in the blood. Palpitations have been associated with Bartonella infections. People can develop blurry vision or light sensitivity. Sometimes these Bartonella infections can mimic other diseases. Some patients with Lyme disease can have some similar symptoms to Bartonella. However, frequently in patients with Bartonella, their neurological symptoms are typically more pronounced. Some neurological symptoms in a patient with Bartonella include headaches, brain fog, insomnia, memory loss, nerve pain, numbness, tingling, and muscle twitches. In patients with seizure-like activity and no other obvious cause, like sudden high fever, head trauma, abnormal EEG, Bartonella is a diagnosis to consider. There can be psychological symptoms such as anxiety, depression, irritability, 
or even rage. Musculoskeletal symptoms can include shin pain, bone pain, or multiple joint pains. Some patients with Bartonella, when awakening in the morning and start to walk, can have pain in the soles of their feet. Now, of course, the symptoms I mentioned could have other causes in addition or instead of Bartonella, but Bartonella is something to keep in mind on the list of possibilities. There are different types of tests that can be done when looking for Bartonella infection. Unfortunately, testing is not 100% accurate. One can still get some false positives or false negatives. Some tests include a blood test called VEGF, which may be elevated in active Bartonella infection. Other tests include a blood test for IFA, IgM, and IgG. There are Bartonella PCR tests to look for the Bartonella DNA. One can also do a tissue biopsy to directly look for the Bartonella organisms. Now, I don't recommend everyone gets a tissue biopsy to look for Bartonella. However, if you are going for a medical procedure already where they can send an additional sample to the lab, it is something for your treating healthcare professional to consider if you're having many of these symptoms. So those are some of the potential signs and symptoms of Bartonella infection. As there are many possibilities, it is a good idea to see your licensed healthcare professional to consider including Bartonella as a potential diagnosis. If you have some of these problems, which I listed in this talk. For further information, please see the references listed below. For a written transcript of this talk, go to www.getwellmedicalcare.com and click on the blog tab. Kindly read the disclaimer section in the information below this video. If you found this information useful, please hit the like button and hit the subscribe button so you can get further informative videos from me. If you know of any others who would find this information useful, please share the video with them. Thank you, and may you have good health.